Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Bikes, Burgers, Beers. Today we are going to be replacing these beautiful stock handlebars that are chrome. They're starting to pit, that's okay, I don't care about that. But what I'm finding is that my hands are just sitting too low. And I was talking to the guys at Barcraft, which make Australian made handlebars. And they've sent me out a set. Uh, so this video isn't sponsored, however they did look after me. So I... Uh, put the uh, promotion or sponsor thing at the top here but uh, yeah I did have to pay for them what we're going to do today is swap the bars over and I'm going to check them out now my biggest concern is not the clutch and throttle cables because you can see the throttle cables here are quite long and floppy as is the clutch cable on this side uh, what we've got is the, the actually even the um, the brake line here looks pretty good as well so not a problem my biggest concern is going to be the wires that go to the switch blocks on either side of the handlebars. So we're going to find out if that's going to work or not. Now the handlebars I ordered specifically have notches underneath and I'll show you that in a second because the Harley Sportster or most of the Harley style of wiring there, there needs to be a little bit of a notch in the handlebar near the control box or near the control switches. I'll show you what that's about in a second. Uh, and I did opt for the internal wiring one. I'm not going to do that today, but I may do that at a later stage. It all depends on how much wiring I've got and if they can snake their way through the uh, new handlebars. So let's go over to the workbench and check out the new handlebars. Well, here we are, folks. Beautiful, isn't it? Nah, just kidding. These are well wrapped. Uh, we've got foam underneath here, we've got bubble wrap on top, and we've got the plastic that you can see just down here by my feet on the workbench. We're going to continue unwrapping these and check out the quality. Oh, here they are, folks. These bars look amazing. Now, they look like chrome, but it's actually polished stainless steel. Very high, beautiful polish. There's not a mark on these. They were packed really well. I like the knurling here as well, which is really good. Uh, that's going to prevent the bars from moving forward and backwards because there is a bit more leverage, I should say, having longer bars. Now, I'm looking at my bars and I'm looking at these and I have to say it's not that much longer. Now, I'm going to take them over to the motorcycle and let's see if uh, uh, we can see the comparison just by putting them in situ. I haven't done anything on the bike yet. So I may end up having uh, the right amount of cabling and we won't need to worry about things. But yeah, let's check it out. Okay, folks, so I've kind of just put the bars in place here. Obviously, it's not in the right position, but you can see a couple of differences. And this is the biggest thing for me. It wasn't so much the height of the bars. You can see from standard, and these are the standard Sportster bars on my 2013 Sportster uh, Custom 1200. You can see they're not that much higher. There's only about, I'm going to say about three inches difference. The main difference I wanted is notice how the bars here compared to my stock ones, the angle is different. Let me put you at a better situation where you can actually see, see the angle, it's different. That's going to help out with comfort for me because I prefer a straighter bar. And in addition to that, it brings the hands up a few inches higher. Now, obviously, when I mount these in place, they're probably going to be up here somewhere and a bit more forward where the mirror kind of is right now. So it's looking pretty good so far. And I think I may have enough cabling. I may. We'll find out. All right, folks, we're going to take off the right hand side controls. This is where the start button, the kill switch and the right turn signal here is. And uh, we're going to need a T25 Torx bit to undo the switch block. And we're going to need a T27 to undo the front brake master cylinder assembly. So let's go for that and then we'll do the other side. Then we're going to use an Allen key to take off this assembly here. Just gently lift it and remove the handlebars. Alrighty, so here are the old bars that I'm holding onto with my left hand. And the new bars are underneath it, you can see. The difference here and also the big difference look at that pullback look at the difference in the angle there so that's going to allow my arms to be straighter now here's that notch i was talking about that's where all the wires kind of go in and uh, that notch has been put there so the wires can go through 
uh, past the control boxes and uh, into the inside, into the into the switch boxes, basically. And you can see on the new one, you've got it there as well. Except these are designed for internal wiring, so it gives you the option to uh, to have both. You can go internal wiring, and uh, all the wires come out of the bottom of the handlebar. There, you can see the hole there. Okay. Now these bars do not have. You can see my index finger here. That's the OEM Harley stock handlebars where the clips go into. You can see the new bars don't have that at all. So you're going to have to use zip ties if you want to keep external wiring. So let's mount the new handlebars and fingers crossed we have enough wiring to go to the switch blocks. Well folks, we've hit a bit of a hurdle and it's my fault, not the bar's fault and not Barcraft's fault. So the notches that are here for the internal wiring cannot be used simultaneously to uh, have these wires from the control boxes, the switch bo blocks, to go in because the wires are just too thick and too stiff for that. Because these edges are sharp, you'll also run into issues where it can cut the wire as well. So what I also found is that the bar will more than likely sit if I get a little bit of focus here, you can see where that hole is, okay? The bar is actually going to sit in there, probably a few mil uh, gap there, but um, yeah. So internal wiring, when you buy the bars that are made for internal wiring, you can only use the internal wiring on a Harley anyway, because uh, that notch is not suitable. And if you look at the old bars, if you look at the cutout on the old bars there, it's actually really wide. It's almost as wide as my hand and it's quite deep and it's smooth as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So the verdict, internal wiring it is. Uh, that's made it more work and I'm going to have to unfortunately go and do some other work that's actually paid work and come back to this. And fingers crossed, it doesn't rain. In case you're wondering if you could make life a little bit easier by not removing the petrol tank and just removing the switch blocks, undoing the wires from here, the reality is, is you can't because all the wires are actually mounted into each switch and uh, they're using rubber grommets and it's all sealed up and it's all epoxied in. So there's no chance of removing the switches from this side. You're going to have to remove the petrol tank or at least raise it unplug the switches from underneath the petrol tank uh, which is going to be under well under the petrol tank here but on the opposite side of the bike which I can't get to right now because I'm holding stuff so I've successfully unplugged the left hand side control switches down here under the petrol tank uh, you just remove this flap here and you get basically access to both sides left and right there's the other side in there the next part, the daunting part, for those uninitiated, we're going to have to remove all of these wires. Now you don't cut them, what you do is, if you look down the plug, notice there's a row, now I don't know how well this is going to come out on the GoPro, but notice there's a top and bottom row of pins. And then above the top set of pins and below the bottom set of pins near my thumb, you can see those round little circles. Yeah, they're holes, and you've got to stick a pin in there, probably like a small paper clip, and it will actually release these wires from this switch. The daunting part isn't that. The daunting part is getting the wires back in in the correct position. So the best thing to do is take a photo of this so you can remember or write them down so you can go, okay, here's the side of the the plug here where the clip is okay so see this side's nice and smooth you got the clip part down here don't worry about that this part here you can go okay you got black black with a red trace yellow with a black trace white with a purple trace and then on this side on the smooth side you've got orange with a white trace yellow blue doesn't seem to have a trace on it and white okay I'm saying that out loud as well because <laughs> I want to know how to put it back together properly 
Alrighty folks, so I've got the wiring in here. I can't really show you because uh, it goes right into the groove. I've got it coming out and uh, if we go around the front of the handlebar here, there we go, and where the wire's coming out. Now I have de-pinned these, take a photo, write it down, do whatever you need to do to write the colours down because uh, if you get them wrong, you're going to stuff your bike up. You probably blow a fuse at the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you blow a light bulb or a horn or uh, things can catch fire. So do it properly. Take a photo. And uh, anyway, I'm going to put this back together. Hopefully, I have... <laughs> Looks like maybe just enough cable length to get this through. Let's carry on. I'm going to put the connector back on. Now these are called Molex connectors. This is a 2013 Sportster. So non-ABS. 2014 they went to ABS. The connectors might be different. Best to check with your particular bike. Alright folks, so we've... Uh got the new handlebars in place everything has been wired you can see however the wires are coming down here and I have to say unfortunately you do need a wiring extension kit so the thing is I only need like two inches you know 50 mil <laughs> five centimeters uh, but um, anyway there's enough slack there but uh, I'm gonna take it for a ride and um, yeah, when I when I turn the bars, it's uh, yeah, not really an issue. The bars are on, and uh, I just have to make some minor adjustments, like um, tightening these up and tightening this side up. I'll do that, and I'll have to readjust the the mirrors, readjust the mirrors, and I'll have to readjust the indicators too. So, in here, there's a grub screw. You turn that to, to loosen it. You'll be able to move these indicators around. There's like a ball joint on the inside. Don't know if you can see that or not. It might be too dark under there. And uh, then you just aim them straight and you tighten the grub screw back up. You do the same on the other side. That's pretty much it. I'll uh, show a photo of the finished product once it's all done. But for now, she's done. Until then, remember folks, keep it twisted. Alrighty folks, there we have it, installation of new handlebars and with internal wiring. You can see there's a fair bit involved in getting that to happen. So I hope that uh, people who might uh, maybe make uh, opinions and assumptions about why it costs so much to get your handlebars replaced will see how much is involved. I cut a lot of the bullcrap out of uh, feeding the wires through the handlebars and all that stuff. It's not easy, let me tell you. But guys and girls, there we have it. And uh, this is me test riding the bike. I'm just going for a little ride with the motorcycle. You can see in some of the shot there, the wires did have to come around the back of the triple clamp there. Uh, unfortunately, they just weren't long enough. These are the stock wires. And uh, I will be getting a wire extension kit to make sure that's nice and safe and routed correctly. So thanks all for watching and uh, appreciate the love, support and don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Cheers.